Okay. So there's uh, been a lot of new tech discovered fairly recently um, in the Riven run for the PC. So I wanted to make a video tutorial for at least the way the way I do the run. I've gotten a lot of questions on uh, the way I do my key bindings and um, various aspects of the run. So I thought this would be the easiest way to answer those questions. Um, I've put a, uh, a, a keyboard and mouse overlay on the screen. So uh, hopefully it seems to seems to work. So you can see when I when I click and when I use keys. Um, you can ignore tab, shift, and control. Those are just kind of in the default layout, and I couldn't be bothered to uh, try to figure out how to remove them. Um, all the other keys that I use are already by default on, on this uh, layout shown. Um, so I guess we'll uh, get right into uh, the tutorial. So um, the first and most important thing to do is to go to Options, and disable transitions. It's the easiest thing and it's incredibly important. You can turn on zip mode, you can turn it off. It doesn't really matter either way. For At least for the any percent route, you don't end up using it. Um, I don't think the water effects matter to my knowledge. So you can leave them on or turn them off. It's up to you. I don't, I don't think it matters. Um, but disabling transitions is critically important. Uh, now a weird thing in Riven is that if you um, come back while you're in the game and reopen the options, it will automatically reset the options back to uh, fastest transitions, not disabled. That's very bad during a run, um, and it's very possible to accidentally open that menu. I've seen lots of people do that. Um, so, at, But you don't have to reset it uh, between runs. As long as you don't go back into the menu, it will stay set at no transitions. So, small point there. Okay, so to start the run, um, we all know you click Start New Game. Time starts on clicking Start New Game. Or if you already had started a game, if you reset or something, time starts on clicking New Game uh, from this menu that pops up. I'm not going to be timing this because we're going to be going through kind of slowly. So you say New Game, and there are four cutscenes to skip. However, uh, if you just smash the mash your skip key and notice that I'm using space as my skip key because I can um, hit it with my thumb there and keep my fingers on WASD. Notice that uh, watch what happens if I start a new game and hit spacebar four times fast. I only picked up three of the four animations. So if you're going fast, I actually click start new game, new game and hit space five times. Um, even though there are only four <laughs> transitions to cut, but doing doing so skips all of them. Um, if you're clicking, if, or if you're hitting space a little more slowly, and remember that space is remapped to uh, escape, or I should say that the, the default binding of escape is remapped to space in my key binding. Um, and you can find my key bindings, they're out on speedrun.com. I put my uh, auto hotkey script out there. So if you are interested in in that, uh, feel free to go out and download those, take a look. Um, where was I? So uh, if you um, go a little more slowly, four clicks is enough. But if you're going fast, you have to do it five times. Okay, enough said about that. So uh, I use predominantly keyboard input. It's tempting to think that because this is a Myth Series game and Myth Series games are point and click, that this is a mouse-driven game. The speed game of Riven, it's a keyboard game. You use the mouse when you have to, but you use the keyboard as much as possible. It's faster, at least for me. You may find something that works better for you. More power to you. This is just what I've uh, had success with. So my first three inputs are forward, right, and then the magical Q, which is uh, kind of a forward left. Now, the default keybinds for Q and E are numpad 7 and 9, which is not very helpful. Um, so I rebind those to Q and E, and you'll see that I get quite a bit of use out of those uh, in the run. They kind of take you angled left and angled right. So let's back up and look at that again. So I go forward, right, and then Q. 
I'll just refer to that as Q. And that gets me into the base of the stairs. So quickly, that looks like, like that. Uh, rapidly to the base of the stairs. And then I um, go quickly up the stairs using galloping. Uh, if you're watching this, you probably already are familiar with what galloping is, but if you're not, um, galloping is the combined input of using W to move forward and clicking to move forward. And while you can uh, use each one individually fairly quickly, that's not too bad, right? Just using W. You can do that same thing with the mouse. But if you double those inputs up, it goes really fast. And you can see that here. So maybe you're already familiar with that. But uh, galloping is a big part of what makes the Riven speedrun interesting, is that it makes it go fast. So uh, once I get to this view, remember I came forward right Q. Then I gallop up the stairs, turn, and I rotate the room four times. Each time you click uh, the button you want to skip twice because you have to skip the animation of the button depressing and the animation of the room rotating. So four skips, turn, forward, left, gallop down the stairs, left twice, and now I'm going to use the, uh, the look down button. So page up and page down are the default keys for this. I rebind them to R and F. Um, so F is look down. If you just press forward here, you jiggle the gate, and that's not good. But if you press F, you look under the gate. Now you can go forward, and you'll, go, and you'll be underneath. Um, so again, to go quickly, once you reach this point, you turn left twice, and then F to go under it, and then forward. Okay? Now at this point, you can... Uh, you can um, gallop in here, but you tend to uh, slam headfirst into a scarab or a wall, which can be confusing. And then you have to try and figure out where you are. So I prefer not to do that. So I prefer to just click through there, and there I showed very badly uh, what happens when you do it wrong. But I prefer to just click through there, which gets you to hit this valve, which you ideally skip turn once, forward twice, and hit that lever. That raises the gate to the, um, I'll call it the antechamber, that back room. Now, during that sound cutscene that it plays, you can't click. I'll display it again. Notice that I can't do anything. There, now I can. So if I'm spam, I spam click here, and that means that as soon as the game lets me, I start moving, and that aligns me with the exit. Once I get to about here, then I start using the W key to start moving forward quickly. The reason for that is because coming out, you can just press W and you go right under the gate. So once you get out to here, you turn right once and you can gallop up the stairs. Turn, go in, and rotate the room four more times. Now you're aligned with the uh, antechamber or the back chamber, whatever. So click four times, or if you want to, you can use the keyboard here. I don't because you have to be a little careful. You can go forward, E, forward, forward. That works too. Um, but you have to be careful doing that, and then I find it a little easier to just click four times. Rotate two times, and hit this gate. This raises the gate in front of the golden dome. You don't have to wait on this one. There's no delay. So as soon as you raise it, you can immediately go back out. That's four clicks. Turn, rotate twice. Now you're aligned with the golden dome. When the room is in this position, you can just press W to move through it, and you'll go straight through. When you're coming from the front to the golden dome, you can just press W, and it moves you right through. So I just W through there, forward through there, until I get to here, at which point I gallop to the end here. You have to be careful if you press W here, you'll look at this little plaque. So try to avoid doing that. Then you turn, you gallop down here, turn, gallop a little bit. You have a choice to make at this point. Whether you want to hit this valve here 
now or on the way back. My personal preference is to hit it now. So I go forward and pressing left doesn't quite get you there. So what does get you there is Q. Q gets you there and then you can press forward, hit that valve. Then it's two turns and now you can just kind of position your mouse a little left of center and gallop all the way to this other valve. Again, if you press forward too many times, you get this view of the plaque, so you have to back out of that. Just press the back key X in my map. Uh, hit that valve to power that. Turn to the right. It's critical to, well, critical. It, it's more efficient to turn right here, because if you turn left, you look out at the ocean, and then you have to turn left again. Whereas if you turn right, you just immediately turn back to the cave. Now you can just gallop all the way through. Some people prefer to do uh, those two valves in the opposite order. I don't think it matters one way or the other. It's just what you're more comfortable with. Um, so it's kind of runner's choice there. So gallop back to here, turn. You have to be careful here because trying to gallop through here, you're gonna run into a wall. So I tend to click through here until I get back to this position. Turn once, rotate the room three times. That sets the room up to be facing the antechamber so that when we come back this way later in the run, it'll already be set up for us. Now you can turn, gallop down the hallway, and get to this door. You can just press W and skip to open this door. And then W two more times and skip to uh, skip the animation of the, the cage rising. Now you press forward once, right, and forward, and you're at the viewer. So that's a quick way to get there. Then you hit this uh, lever to raise the, raise the uh, temple door. And once you've done that, you can actually just mash the forward button, mash W, and it gets you to here. And when your cursor appears, that's when you can actually act again. So again, press W again and skip and that opens the door, and press W once more, and you'll be out of the room. So that's W skip W in rapid succession. So from here, I'll go W skip W to get to this point, and then you can gallop down the hallway. And you notice that by just galloping down the hallway, you kind of automatically start opening that stone door. So you can just uh, skip twice to skip the handle turning and then the door opening. This is one of the parts that people often get caught up with uh, or caught up in when trying to do this run. Um, it's easy to get turned around here. What I found is the fast way to get through here is just to press W to get to here and then E, which is again your kind of angled forward right, and then E again. And that gets you to this point. Uh, where you're aligned with the uh, with the tram station. So again, from this spot, WEE -E gets you right here. And then you can you have a couple options. I tend to just click here. I click four times, one, two, three, four, and that gets me to here, and then you can call the tram. Alternatively, you can do this. You can go WWWE to get there. Now, what happens if you go www, you'll see, you get past the call button, which is not ideal. And going back doesn't work, so you have to turn twice, go forward, turn twice. So that's a big delay. So I, I tend to not do that, I tend to click because it's a little safer. Um, you then press the blue button and skip, I think uh, a couple, two, three times. Yeah, two times. You skip twice, one for the button push and one for the tram to come. And then it's four times forward to get into the tram, but you can just kind of match the W key and you'll get there. In this particular tram, pressing W doesn't actually activate it. Some trams it does, but in this one it doesn't, and this is the only tram in the any percent route, so that's the only one that matters. So click here and skip to turn, click here and skip, and we're on Jungle Island. All right, one island down. Once you get to jungle, you wanna turn, step out. You can kind of gallop to the end, turn left, and then gallop up the uh, pathway. At this point, you can either click here to face up the stairs, 
Or if you accidentally just press forward, you'll be facing down, just turn around. Either way is about the same time, it doesn't make a big difference. Then you kind of, now at this point you can just gallop up the stairs all the way to here, and you'll just sort of take the correct path through that clear cut area, which is pretty handy. So again, you just kind of slam through there. You'll get stopped by that uh, animation of the guard, uh, and you have to skip twice, because first there's an animation of a couple birds flying off, and then the guard actually spinning the tower alarm thingy. So it's two skips there. Forward twice, turn right, forward, and you can forward again to start that gate opening and hit skip. Now at this point you can actually sort of uh, just gallop through here because if you start moving forward, we'll do it slowly, you get to this Y, it actually takes you on the correct path automatically. Um, oh, there's a bug. So just to show that again, you can just sort of gallop through there and you'll end up here at the warp totem. Um, so click that to open it. A thing that often happens is people go too far and end up staring right at the totem. And then it's tempting to turn, walk back, and turn. You don't need to. If you screw up and get to here, it's not ideal, but you can turn twice, not three times, turn twice, and click from here, and the mouth will open. So, a um, little backup strat to save you a little time if you accidentally make a mistake there. So then, uh, from the normal position, it's four steps forward to get into the totem. You have to be careful. You don't want to gallop there because if you accident, it, you, you automatically turn around once you get into the elevator. So if you keep jamming forward, you'll just kind of come right back out the mouth of the warp totem. And that's not ideal. So I just hit forward four times and then raise this up. It's four skips because you're, you're skipping the handle raising, the lever to close the mouth, raising, the mouth itself closing, and then the elevator going up animation. So four animation skips. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, once we're up here in the treetop level, we can just gallop. And we'll slam straight for head first into the spinning dome. Just turn right and keep galloping. And when you get to that door, you'll want to skip. And you can quit, you can immediately, as soon as you skip, step inside. Now this spot is a little tricky because it's um, sort of sound. Uh, there's a sound cue, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So I'll show you the correct time when you can actually get in. Right then. That's the sound at which you can get in. And we discovered this by, if you keep jamming forward to get in as fast as you can, the problem is you accidentally unlock the door and then you have to skip another animation. So the key is to just hit forward once at the correct time right then. And if you have your mouse, I'll show you again, right here, then your mouse will be in the right place to immediately click and skip to raise up, go over here, click and skip to close the floor, make sure that the floor actually gets closed. If you're a little quick on the skipping, sometimes it doesn't quite close. It's odd. And then back here, go back down. You can just press forward and skip to open the door. And then just kind of jam through here. Be careful though again, because if you go too far, you'll step back out, right? The same thing. You automatically turn around when you get into the elevator. So if you just are, um, if you're just uh, rip roaring along here with galloping, you'll just turn yourself right around. Now, that's not what we really want. So try to be a little careful there. Pull this down and skip. Skip once, and then just enjoy the video of going down. You can't skip this video. So you get a little breather, you can check your splits, you can check your Twitter, you can read your email, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not that long. Um, once I get to the bottom, I tend to be already spamming W because uh, that immediately will get me to this view and spamming W doesn't hurt because as you can see there's nowhere else to go once you get to this view so it immediately gets me here as quickly as possible. I hit this lever it's two skips one for the lever going down one for the mouth opening and now you can uh, gallop out of here until you hit jump scare girl skip her 
At this point, I like to click. And the reason I click at this point is because if you gallop, I'll show you, you are likely to end up here. See? You don't want that. That's a bad place to end up. So I tend to just click through here because it's a little safer. And skip this. Now, if you're... This isn't... This gate is odd. It's... Um, sometimes, if I'm a little happy with the uh, with the escaping or the spacing in my setup. Uh, this animation glitches and like it opens twice. I don't really understand exactly why. There's some looping animation stuff that happens in this game. This one does not soft lock you. However, there is a crash spot here. Um, and uh, if you're a fan of the Riven speedrun, you probably already know something about the crashes. But if not, I'll tell you that on this island in particular, uh, crashes are pretty common when you're galloping. They won't happen when you're just keyboarding, and they won't happen when you're just mousing, um, generally speaking. Uh, they can happen if, depending if you're like inputting and escaping at the same time, um, so be careful with that. <coughs> so I'll note the locations where you need to be careful and slow down uh, to avoid crashing. So you come out here, you can just turn, and you can just gallop all the way until you get to this animation of the villagers fleeing to safety. Skip it. Now, there's a crash node right around that dock there. If you're, um, if you're brave, you can gallop a, a little bit in here. I tend to be conservative and just jam forward with W. You can just go forward here and it'll automatically align you. Once I'm past that dock, it's safe to gallop again. So you gallop to this spot. Now, one point I'd like to point out is that when I do this run, I actually, when I'm galloping from here, I try to keep my mouse cursor a little high. Not high enough that I look up, but high so that as I'm jamming forward, I'll sort of scoot right up that ladder at the end. You see how my mouse was high enough that when I got to the ladder, it just took me right up. And I keep jamming forward all the way to here. If you go too far, that's fine. You just go back. If you go way too far, uh, well, okay, but you have to go... If you go way too far, you end up opening opening the lid. And that slows you down. So try not to go past here. If you get to here, that's okay. If you accidentally open the lid, that's not ideal. Anyway, you uh, hit this lever, and it's two skips. One for the lever, one for the sub. Single turn, and now you can gallop all the way back to this ladder. Again, I try to uh, keep my mouse kind of low here so I can more easily go down. Alternatively, you can gallop to this point and then press F to look down uh, and do that fairly quickly. So that's another option. You can gallop here and then go forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now remember that crash node, you, once, once I come down the ladder, I tend not to gallop. I just W forward because of that crash node that's inconvenient. So I just keep going forward to here. Once you get stopped, turn left, keep going forward. Now you're past the crash node and you can safely just gallop. All the way through here you can gallop. Once you get to here you have to be a little careful because it's easy to go off on the wrong path and head over towards the minecart or the gate. So I slow down a little and just click through here and see right there. See how easy that is to do. So as I'm galloping forward, I go like this and click and then I keep galloping. And you quickly zip down that staircase all the way down to the Sunner Lagoon here, which will stop you with a cutscene you need to skip twice. Turn right and you can jam forward again with galloping. All the way to the end here is fine. Then I turn and you can either click down or just press F and forward. And then if you just click on the ladder, you'll jump to the ladder. This is another crash location right around in here, so I don't gallop from this point. I just W forward now until I'm at the sub, and then either click down or press F, doesn't matter which, and either click or press forward, doesn't matter which. Either way, immediately skip, and you'll be in the sub. Um, so the sub controls, you've got the, the 180 here, you've got the slider to choose left or right, then you have the lever to go. The trick is that uh, there's a different number of animations you need to skip for each control. The slider is a single skip. 
the 180 is two skips. And the forward is three skips. So when you first get into the sub, you want to hit the 180, two skips, then the lever, three skips, and hit it again. That will get you to the, uh, the tower where you can extend the, the submarine docks. So you can either click up here, which is what I tend to do out of habit, I suppose. You can also just press R and forward and skip. Then forward, turn twice, and now you can just kind of gallop up, uh, up that ladder. Hit that middle lever, that's the important one for this run. Turn around. Again, you want to be using the keyboard as much as possible. You don't want to be spending time mousing over to the side to turn. You want to just hit the D or hit the A. It doesn't matter which in this case. This is an odd spot where you cannot look down. You can't use F to, uh, to go to look down this uh, ladder here. I don't know why. So you have to click here. I actually haven't tested if from here. You, okay, so from here you can look down. Uh, oddly enough, but from over here by the levers, which is where you are in the run, because you don't, there's no need to look out that window. F doesn't work, so you tend to just click. I guess you could go forward, turn, and F. That seems more work than just clicking. So you can just click there. You can press F three times or click down three times. Doesn't matter. And then turn twice and get back in the sub. From this spot, you want to 180, two skips, forward, three skips, slider, 180, two skips, forward. That will get you to the warp gallows. So remember up and then turn twice. At this point, you can jam forward and then turn a couple times. So you can, I'll show you, you can jam forward and then turn twice and click this lever, or I often just click three times, click on the lever, and then click it. It's up to you. I think they're about the same in terms of time. Uh, technically, I think the clicking is slightly fewer inputs, so it might be ever so slightly faster. And then once you click this, it's two skips. And then you can't skip this portion. You have to just kind of spam click on that on the manacles and then it's one skip and you'll be at the top. From here it's forward, forward, right, forward, forward, forward to activate it. So forward, skip, skip, because you skip the wheel turning and you skip the prison opening. Uh, a good little optimization here is you can actually use the E key to go directly into the prison. Like that, and then forward, forward, and it will look you straight at the little grate. Unfortunately, pressing forward here doesn't open the grate, so you have to click it and skip once, and then click inside and skip twice. Once to skip the little stick rising, and once to skip the wall opening. Forward into here. Um, it's tempting to gallop down here. Don't do it. Don't risk it. It's real easy to crash in this tunnel. So I just jam the W key all the way to the end. Click this light. Turn. Forward. Click. Forward. Click, forward, forward, click, turn, and here you can forward, skip, or you can click, click, skip, either way. Once you're in here, you actually can gallop. You have to be careful, though, because if you get to here and you press forward, you'll look at this weird, like, bear, hippo, pig thing and have to back up. So be careful about that. Once you're in the middle of the stone circle, turn around so you're facing the exit. And you should probably already know this, but it's fish, beetle. So you click on it and then click and skip. So fish, beetle, turn right, frog, turn right, center, wark. It's two skips after the wark because you have to skip the, you know, we win animation of, of the water moving away. Now you can just press forward, skip the animation uh, of zooming around Tay and click the linking panel to get into Tay. Once you're in Tay, it's two turns, and then you can jam to the back, and then it's two skips. 
don't, you don't don't waste a lot of time there. You want to skip twice quickly. Once is the scene of you getting blow darted, and the other is like the boat ride. Um, you can waste time there that you don't need to waste. So you wake up inside the tree thing, I guess. Um, so you want to get up, and then you can actually just gallop to the end here. Now this guy, I believe that's actually Richard Vandervend, um, in the red robe there. It's RNG whether he shows up or not. If he does, you have to skip. If he's not there, you don't want to skip because then it takes you to the menu. And when you come back out of the menu, he might show back up. See, like that. So he control you. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, once you don't have anything, you can just press back to get out of this, turn, and then gallop to this window, turn, forward, skip the cutscene, click, click to pick up the books, back skip to get the uh, linking book back to Ribbon. So we're back in Ribbon, turn around, again it's tempting to gallop here, Don't I wouldn't risk it, I just jam forward. Notice that uh, hitting, just hitting forward automatically activates the, uh, the little exit lever. So you can actually, if you're fast, skip twice and forward. You lose control a little bit until the mouse reappears, but it's obvious. And then it's forward, right, and then you can actually gallop here. Once I get to here though, I kind of stop galloping momentarily because you can take advantage of a small glitch. <coughs> Excuse me. Where if you just press forward right here, you don't extend the ladder, you just kind of go down the ladder. You just fall down. It saves a small amount of time, you don't have to skip a cutscene. Turn, and now you can gallop back up here. Now be careful here, because we are heading towards the, uh, the boiler island. Once you get to this scene, my quick way of getting through here is you press Q, and then you press E, and you're through. And now you can just gallop, and it will automatically activate the uh, minecart ride. You skip twice, once for the lever going up, once for the actual ride itself, and you find yourself on Boiler Island. Once I get here, I press forward, look down, forward, and that gets me here, to the bottom of the, uh, of the ladder. Turn, forward twice, turn, gallop, Hit that lever, skip, turn. From here it's three steps forward, turn, two steps. Don't go three steps or you'll get stuck up there. So two steps, turn, to the end. Uh, the fastest way to solve this puzzle is actually ignore this valve at first. Uh, hit this wheel, skip twice. Hit this slider, skip once. Hit this valve, skip once. Turn back, hit this valve, skip twice. You've solved the boiler puzzle, turn right, go to the end, turn, skip the animation of it opening. And now you can you can gallop through here. There, there are no crash nodes that I know of on this island. So once you get to here, you can either click down or just press F and then forward. Up to you, turn, go all the way to here, turn, open the doors. You can just press forward again to open those doors. Walk in, turn around, click the doors and skip to close them. And your mouse should already be in the right spot, so you can just click, or if you want to, you can just press R. Um, R? No, not R. E. You can just press E to get right here. And then you can zip forward. It's real easy to go past that, so it's a little time loss. Turn off the fan. Go back in. Careful uh, galloping through here, because if you do, you're likely to end up doing this. So you don't really want to do that. So I gallop a little, but then I tend to just click until I'm here, at which point I can safely gallop again. So click if you have to click <clears throat> too many times on this book. Click to open it, and then just jam D to go through the pages. From my experience, it, you can't like gallop the pages, so there's no point. I don't. I don't think there's any point in trying to gallop on the pages. It doesn't seem to actually make it go any faster. So I just spam, uh, spam D. <clears throat> so you get your code. Ideally, you memorize it. Um, for this, we're talking through it, so I'm just going to write it down real quick. 
Uh, getting good at the numbers is very important for this run. So one, three, four, six, twelve. That's a really good code. So you can just press back and skip to back out of the book, and then you have to press back two more times, turn, forward, forward, forward will open the door, forward, turn, and now we can just gallop all the way here real fast. Hit this, skip once. This is a place where I have trouble and I frequently accidentally hit the menu here. Gallop forward, turn, gallop forward, click here and skip once. And it's three times forward, turn, twice, forward. Click the lever, two skips, turn twice, forward twice, turn once, go forward. Again, it's easy to go past there. And then gallop here, turn twice, click the button, skip twice, gallop here, click the slider, skip twice, and now you're back to the rotating room. Um, the same rules of the rotating room apply as before. At this point, I like to just click five times, personally. That's what I do. I click one, two, three, four, five, turn, rotate two times, and now you're back into the standing at the front aligned with the golden dome. So you can just W, 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 and then just kind of jam forward. Uh, solve this real quick. You can either look up the answer or just memorize it. I've got it very memorized at this point. I need to get better at my uh, mouse speed. I'm not That's something I'm not good at, and I can definitely pick up or save time on my run by doing so. Uh, click this and skip twice. Click the button and skip twice. Turn. You can gallop a little bit, but be careful. And then click through here, turn, rotate three times. Um, in my most recent PB, I only rotated it twice and then I ran head first into a stone wall and was very confused as to why I couldn't get through. Uh, somewhat embarrassing, but that's the way it goes. So three rotations at this point. Then click through to here and now you can safely gallop, turn, gallop, turn, gallop, all the way to here. Press this button, skip twice, turn left because if you turn right you have to turn twice for some reason. But if you turn left, you only have to turn once. And then you can kind of gallop up here. Uh, another embarrassing thing I did in my most recent PB was I pressed forward again here, which is a big slowdown because then you have to turn around and come back. So don't be bad like me. Be good <laughs> and stop here. Okay, so let's talk for a second about scope skip. This was discovered by Admiral Flapjack. Um, and <clears throat> what he found was that normally you have to click this button on the correct frame, right? Uh, in this case, it's the open eye uh, for this item. But what uh, Flapjack discovered was that when you first zoom in on the scope, and also when you go to the menu and then come out of the menu, the animation resets to approximately the correct frame. And we've since learned from the source code that there's a three-frame window on either side. So basically you have three frames um, in which to click. So you can accomplish this skip in one of two ways. The, the, I think the easier one is what I just called the normal scope skip. So you have your mouse positioned where the button is, you go to the menu, and then in rapid succession you'll unmenu, click, and then <clears throat> escape or, or skip. Uh, and that will start the sequence of it, um, of it ending. So watch as I demonstrate here and how that works. I didn't have to wait for the spinning uh, symbol to come up. So, um, and so once you, once you correctly perform the skip, what it ends up being is you hit um, space to exit the menu, you click, and then you rapidly skip three times because there are actually multiple animations that you want to skip. So it, once you get to here, it ends up being space, click, space, 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 like that. And that very rapidly gets you to the correct configuration. Now, 
Uh, you can also perform the skip um, when you first zoom in on the scope. And we, uh, I think Flapjack figured this out as, uh, <coughs> at first as well. Uh, it took me a while to successfully get it. So I've taken to calling this swag skip because it looks a little flashier. I know, it's silly of me, right? Nobody says that anymore, I'm sure, but whatever, I'm old. So if you position your mouse at the right spot, and you can use these clouds right here as kind of a helpful guide, you can press the Q key to zoom in on the scope, and then immediately click and escape three times, ideally, but once is enough to start the, or to, to correctly do the skip. So if you zoom in, click escape, you notice that we have successfully stopped the rotation of the dome. So <clears throat> doing this quickly, you'll zoom in with Q, click, and then escape three times, or space three times. And that opens the dome. So that's probably the fastest way, and it looks pretty flashy to do it. All right, so that's scope skip and swag skip. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so then you just press forward here, and enter your combination. So mine was 12, what was it? 12, 6, 4, 3, 1. Oh, what a great combo. 6, 4, 3. Uh, this is another thing that I need to get faster at. <clears throat> I'm not super great at mousing, but that's not relevant here. Basically, as soon as those sliders go and you hear the rumble noise, you can escape and skip uh, the animation on this particular dome. That's not the case on the Prison Island Dome, we'll get to that. Uh, don't click here, that wastes a lot of time. Just forward, forward again. Uh, I guess forward doesn't work here. Forward, but you can just click the book, skip twice, and click here, and you'll be in Gen's office. <clears throat> turn twice. Don't look at the books at this point, just turn twice with the keyboard. It's much safer, because if you try to click, you can accidentally click the book. So just turn with the keyboard and hit that little button to summon again. At this point I like to spam the uh, escape button just to immediately escape that first cutscene. You're very fortunate to have recovered it. <clears throat> if I may. Thank you. And now we wait. Um, a familiar <laughs> a familiar period for anyone who runs this game. Uh, it's something like a minute and 14 seconds is what I've timed it at. Minute, minute and 13 maybe if you're quick. Uh, for this uh, portion where Gen reads a book. And then once you click the book, uh, it's 12 seconds of dark of black screen until you reappear. So uh, all told, you're looking at a minute and a half essentially of, of the whole run that's taken up by <laughs> just this cutscene which is a huge portion of a run that's less than six and a half minutes long. <clears throat> um, what else can I say at this point? Um, I wish you could see your mouse while Gen is reading because it would help position it more correctly, but you can't, so you just have to try and quickly click. Uh, it seems to me like the top part of the where the picture is is about right, so I try to click around there. And again, I spam the skip button here to immediately go past that scene of uh, Gen opening the book. And so you reappear here in Gen's lab. You want to turn right. Don't go forward here. That's not good. That's a waste of time. You want to turn right, forward, left, forward. Hit that slider and escape. Back, turn, forward, forward. And then you can either just you can just click, and since most of the screen is down, that's pretty easy to do. Just click down at this point. Turn. I like to turn right and click again. It doesn't look like you're going to turn right there, but it does. And then click this uh, and listen to the code. Be sure to click on the little egg timer thing. So you have to listen to the code and then skip quickly. So that was 33233, which is a nice easy code. I'm getting great luck with these codes here. So once you've listened to the code, press back to get out of the zoomed in view, 
and then I like to <clears throat> press back again and then <clears throat> excuse me just turn left twice click here and then you can go forward twice left twice and you'll be <clears throat> facing the lever to open the cage click that click in on it it's real easy to not click directly on it and to accidentally zoom out you see how small the actual clickable zone is here so try hard to click that skip twice forward and if you just go forward like this so that his writing desk is in front of you the book on the bottom left is prison island so you can click that click it again click one more time skip twice and link there click this button when your cursor disappears is when you can hit escape <coughs> or skip excuse me <clears throat> turn I would love to be able to gallop through this region <clears throat> but there's a crash node right in the middle that I've hit both coming and going so I just don't risk it I just jam the W key here until I get to here and then try to remember what our code was got it so um, notice that when I click the the lever the little slider lever thingy to uh, actually enter the code I skipped three times so it's three skips to, to get to this view quickly and then it's forward seven times I think one two three four five six seven yep seven times forward and then you can either do the scope skip or the swag skip again conveniently this cloud is right in the perfect spot so you can just put your mouse over the uh, cloud and Q click space 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 and you'll be good to go jam forward set your code again right 12 6 4 3 1 this one you have to wait till the rising dome is like right here at the bottom of the clouds right there is when you can actually skip it you can't skip it before who knows why skip twice once you click that link back into Gen's office <clears throat> Click this book and then immediately hit left and you'll be on the correct book. Click it, click again, skip twice, click. Hit this lever and this one you can immediately skip once you hit the little button. A lot of little odd idiosyncrasies in this game. Turn and now we're in the home stretch. We gallop down here, click this button and skip twice. Forward, <clears throat> click this button and skip twice. Turn right, gallop, gallop, gallop. Click that and skip twice. Get through to here. <clears throat> Be a little careful through the rotating room. Again, it's as always easy to crash into a wall or a beetle. Once you're here, turn right, gallop down to the end, turn right, and then it's three clicks. One, two, three. And then open up your Catherine's journal. Click and just jam the D key. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, until you get <clears throat> here to this code. Uh, 42525, you can press back. Um, <clears throat> an important consideration here is that you can skip the animation of the buttons pressing to speed them up. So 42525. Five. You have to be careful though, because if you go to the menu, it erases all of your inputs and you have to do it over again. So take some. Take some care here to do it right and not go to the menu. So four, two, five, two, five. Click this and skip immediately. Back. Click over here for the stop. Click it and skip. Back. Click that and skip. The little handle. And then you can you can't skip the animation of the um, of the telescope going down, but you can skip the animation of the little flumpy button going in. So click skip. Two, three, four, and then one more time to uh, complete the game, which I'm not going to do right here because then that would trigger the end sequence. Um, so that's that's the way that I go through the game um, <clears throat> using the the hotkeys that I have. So you see, I get quite a bit of use out of WASD as well as Q and E. Some use out of R and F. I use them in certain places, um, and uh, for me, I like having skip on 
space just because my thumb is resting right on it with this configuration that makes it real easy to hit. I know that requires a lot of muscle memory retraining for people who are accustomed to having a different setup. And hey, if you have something else that works better for you, I'm happy for you. I hope, I hope you have something that uh, helps you do the run as quickly as you can. Um, but this is what I found that works for me. I'm pretty happy with this setup. <clears throat> so if you've watched this whole long video, it's <laughs> 50 minutes long, then uh, thanks for your patience. And um, I hope it was in some way helpful or enjoyable. And uh, have, a good, have a good one and have fun running Riven. It's uh, one of my favorite games and definitely my favorite game that I've speedrun so far. So, all right, have a good one. Bye-bye.